Okay, we are back with Kobe Topaz. What's working now? Let's talk about how you all created a 40% CPL drop using AI. This seems just way too good to be true. I'm highly skeptical. All right, so I'll give a bit of a backstory. So we ran ads for, and this is like one brand that has three brands underneath. We were running traffic to all of them, different different brands, obviously different air fares, everything is different. Uh, but kind of like one umbrella brain, uh, brand. So 2022 was definitely a tough year across the board for these guys. And at the end of the 2022, what we decided to do is we did an entire yearly review and we looked back to everything that we did. All the ads we ran, everything like to, to we uncovered like pretty much everything that there is to cover. And we looked at everything and we asked ourselves, okay, what can we do better next year? And then we started to analyze, okay, we've done that, that was missing, this could have done, this could be better. And then we started mapping out different opportunities for us to explore next year. So we mapped out and I'll give just a couple of uh, the stuff we identified. So um, the first thing, so for, so for these guys, this is a, fr- uh, they have a lot of franchisees. So each franchisee has their own budget and Sometimes the budget are extremely low and we all know that Meta likes to have at least 7x of your CPA uh, per day. That's not the case for these guys. So what ended up happening is last year, we ran a couple of retargeting ads for a couple of campaigns. They generated good results, but then for other campaigns that didn't have sufficient budget, and I'm talking like sufficient budget, they didn't even have like five bucks a day to run for retargeting. Like, um, like it, it was that low. Um, so... We thought about it and it's like, okay, retargeting ads made the performance better. We, we should have to in, enforce it across all campaigns, regardless of the budget, it is what it is. So we looked at all of our ads that converted well for cold traffic, and then we started tweaking the messaging to be suitable more for warm traffic. So that was point number one, just launch retargeting ads across the board. And I'm talking about like 70 campaigns for each account, mm-hmm. for two accounts, and then another account was like around 13. Mm-hmm. So over like 150 campaigns. So we started the reason, like, not to interrupt, but so the reason for that is these are individual franchisees and individual markets like DMAs, like their markets are very, very specific. They don't want to advertise outside of that individual region. So this is a, yep. this is a very large uh, campaign, massive campaign structure, lots of humans, uh, you know, it, it, touching it and, and optimizing it on a regular basis. And this is not your typical kind of, oh, simplify things with four or five campaigns like Meta uh, yep. recommends you doing. This is this is a massive thing, but all in its own geography, all tied back to the individual franchisee. Exactly, yep. So the first point was retargeting as the second point was, we know that there was, the, the landing page is just didn't convert as they used to convert. When we tried multiple messaging on the ad side, like we tried a lot of things, but the landing page just didn't deliver the job. So we thought, okay, developing a completely new landing page, that's something that can take a lot of time. We need we need to get the results faster. So we went back to Legion forms on Facebook. Now, if you don't know the evolution of Legion forms, previously, the first variation was, it was just, you, you click on the lead form and then you submit your details and that's it, you're gone. The second variation, because Meta understood that the lead forms produced really low quality leads because people didn't remember what the heck they're opting in for. So what the second uh, variation of it was, you click on the lead form and then you have to swipe with your finger to approve your submission and that's it. That didn't- still pre-populate with your profile information. Yep. One of the experiences we've had using lead forms, and this is anecdotal, but I think other people have had this too, is people don't always use their most legitimate email address for their Facebook profile. Right. Is there any way right. to like get them to update that or we, swap right it over? I think Zuckerberg is busy with his upcoming fight with Musk, but after that, I'll give him a call and I'll ask <laughs> him. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm just curious, like, for example, if you have a really compelling delivery that's about to happen. Like Rachel Peterson, who's a friend of mine, she's got this phenomenal lead magnet she's running, uh, 300 uh, ideas for TikTok. I don't even run TikTok, but I do a lot of social, and so I wanted the lead magnet. 
So I go uh, message her on Instagram saying, I want the lead magnet. And she says, great, chat me your email address and I'll send it to you. Boom, I'm gonna give her my real email, not the BS email. And if you use that with lead forms, you could do the exact same thing. So I, and maybe I don't mean to a ask a question and then answer it, but one idea would be just make sure that the opt-in leads to a, a promised delivery and the delivery value is high enough. And then you can make sure that they, because I know the field is open, it's available. It's not, so it's locked with whatever email they have pre-populated so they can update it with a better email address. Right, yep. We also addressed that issue with the lead form that we created. So when Facebook created the third variation, now it's it's called rich creative and then what what ends up happening is you can actually it, it's kind of they they're kind of combining instant experience and lead form which was only all, always my dream that they'll do it mm. so you actually can build like a landing page with an opt-in form inside of facebook so you can bypass if, you, if your current landing page is not working or if there's any technical issue or whatever you can set up an actual landing page inside of facebook so what we ended up doing is we chose the third option and then basically all I did, and again, I wrote the, I built the page and I am not a copywriter by all means, but the landing page still crushed, the, the lead form still crushed it. What, what I did is I actually looked at the landing page and I just pulled information that was really strong, like diff, uh, strong bullet points, strong promises and stuff. And then I used ChatGPT to rephrase them for the, for the lead form because there, there's, there's a character limit. So for example, for the headline, you can use like 81 characters. For the bullet points, I think it's around like 40. So we had to tweak them accordingly. And then we started build the build the lead form inside of Meta. So let me share my screen and I'll just show you how it looks like. This is where you'd want to go over to the YouTube channel, perpetualtraffic.com forward slash YouTube, right? Awesome. That's right. Follow along. Yeah. Follow along. See what Kobe's doing. See what Kobe's doing. Yeah, because this is this is pretty cool. Like this is all changed. Like when lead forms first came out, they were just a disaster and nobody used them. And then everyone yep. forgets about them. And this is classic meta. And I think it's probably Google too. When stuff comes out, they use it once and then they never go back to it. Well, if you're a media buyer, if you're a CMO, director of marketing, VP of marketing, you're running your own organization, you have media buyers on staff, tell them to go back to the tools that they tried before, didn't work and try them again. Dude, media that was buyers get back. stuck. They get stuck in their ways. We've talked about this in previous episodes, but this is a case in point. Like to hear it, you're talking about a, an, an enormous improvement using an AI tool first off. So you should be doing that. And I'm just, uh, I'm getting on my soapbox here, uh, Kasim, a bit because like you should never stop learning. And here I yeah. am, something years old, still learning every single day. You it's broke like up if, there, Ralph. I, I, <laughs> yeah, I, yeah, I couldn't what happened. It, yeah. I don't know what happened. The point is, is like you have to go back and, and relearn the things that you thought didn't work before. Ah, oh, that doesn't work. Oh, you know, brand awareness campaigns don't work. Ah, oh, traffic campaigns don't work. Bullshit. They, they work. You know, lead forms, eh, they don't work. I remember when Instagram started advertising, Kasim. This is way back when. And everyone was like, ah, ads on uh, Instagram are never going to work. Are you serious? 60 to 70% of people that see an ad on Instagram end up purchasing from that brand. Like there is amazing statistic. It's become a juggernaut. So don't discount the tools that you've used in the past. And I'm talking to you, tier 11 employees, as well as the rest of the world. By the way, the point is, is you got to go back and do it. And Kobe, this is a great example of you going back and improving it and using new tools like AI to make it even better. All right. So let me share my screen. So as you can see, this is the lead form. Now I chose, uh, in terms of form type, I chose rich creative. Now, when we scroll down, you can see the first section is intro. So basically what I did here is I added an image of a alone that's looking really good. And this is basically what our ideal customer wants. They want that good looking lawn. And then the headline I used is your lawn could look this good. Simple headline, nothing too crazy here. Then when you scroll down a bit, you can see the first section is a bit, a bit of an overview. So this part, I didn't write it. I just took a bit from the landing page and just told ChatGPT, write me the same thing with the same, like write me a sentence that has the same meaning, but in 81 characters. Wow. And then it spit it out in 75. Yep. And then this, the, 
section after that is benefits. So I added two, I uh, added three benefits. And then again, all from ChatGPT. I went through the landing page, took a couple of benefits there, played with ChatGPT. In this case, I told him uh, that I need 55, 57 characters max. Spit those out for me. I gave, I gave them a read, Look, looked good. That's it. Then you can see the other sections build your story. So here you have a couple of uh, versions. I choose how it works. And then here you basically have like three points on what makes this product unique, how it actually works. And again, everything from the landing page and then rewarded by ChatGPT. And then as we scroll down, there's a section of social proof. That's That was big because I wanted people to see actual live proof before they even opt in to further improve the lead quality. So we just took, we know that before and after images is absolutely crushing for these guys. So I use that as my uh, testimonials. Then I took testimonials from customers. Now I just added like a, some sort of carousel that shows actually what the product does, shows the before and after and the quote from the customer. So I did that, we got the testimonial sections. And then there's a section here, which is named incentives. So basically I use that as my CTA, which is request a free quote, get 50% off, click on the button now. And then that's it, they have the green button, they have the questions, but they're actually fields. And then what I did here, so this is going back to Kasim's point, is previous you know, people, sometimes the emails or phone number, they added to Facebook, they're not really using at uh, the moment. So what I did here is I added a section, please make sure that the details uh, listed below are accurate. To, just to make sure that people double check what they input. You can see that there, there are multiple fields here. It's just it's not just your email and phone number. And then that's pretty much it, privacy policy, nothing too crazy. And then here, I just send them to a thank you page that further, like, further preframes them for the phone call. So basically, Facebook page, uh, sorry, not a Facebook page, a landing page just tells them more about the brand and why they should choose them. That's pretty much it. This I took me- here for you, Kobe. Yep. It's from our, our interview with Savannah Sanchez. She talked about post-conversion follow-up surveys and how she had an almost 50% opt-in rate. It'd be really cool if after they reach out, you give them the chance to, hey, tell us more about your lawn care needs in order to maximize the value of our time together. And instead of just the thank you page, it's like, you know, progressive profiling with a deeper opt-in form. Sorry to try to improve on a triple no, PhD no. strategist, but no, I was no, 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 no. not even my idea. No, no, all good. Thank you for that. That's good. Yeah, I mean, help the, the sales reps do a better job. Yeah, absolutely. But, but that's pretty much it. That's the landing page we used um, in terms of like the ad copy and uh, the creatives we use, pretty much the same concepts that we use for the landing page. The main variable, the first iteration, the main variable was landing page versus lead form. We saw that there was a media drop in CPL there. We didn't go all in with the spend because we know previously there was an issue with lead quality. So there was a significant drop in spend just by using the lead forms. And then we waited a couple of weeks, like, I think around a month for the client to actually get all the leads, get the sales cycle going on, and then come back to us with numbers of, okay, out of those leads, this is the percentage of people that converted to sales, we're good to go. So once we got that approval, now we just, all the account is on lead forms. Yeah. That is, that is cool. And if, if you're, if you're listening, I really recommend if you're running any sort of lead gen campaign, go to perpetualtraffic.com forward slash YouTube and watch this video because this is pretty badass. And I was just sort of Googling around about lead forms. There's nothing like this on the internet that shows this kind of stuff, by the mm. way. Like this is bleeding edge, leading edge, you know, uber creative, going back to a, a, a form that we discounted years ago, using AI obviously using chat GPT in a, in a great and constructive way that makes you more productive and allows you to save a hell of a lot of time. Cause each one of those fields has a character limitation. You're giving that in the prompt. Like this is everything that's great. Hey everyone, Regina here from starter PPC. Today I want to talk to you about the most direct way that you can make more money on each of your marketing dollars. And this mostly applies to e-commerce companies because I'm talking about very direct ways of making more money on the website. 